Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chris with CNM Aquatics. If this is your first time joining us on our channel, we talk about coral and propagation and all things marine tank related. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, uh, the notification bell. We release new videos every weekend so you can stay up to date. So, I noticed a problem with some of my Acropora in my main tank. So you have something called STN and RTN. STN is slow tissue necrosis and RTN is rapid tissue necrosis. Per the name, one happens slowly, one happens quickly. So I believe these Acropora, you can see the white spots at their bases. This is RTN um, starting to kick in. I just noticed it kind of overnight. And I found out my DKH has been running low. It's been about 6.6 to 6.7, and I usually keep it around 8.5. So I think that's the contributing factor on what's happening with this SPS coral. And you guys know SPS coral, acros, certain ones can be pretty picky. Um, they like certain water quality, certain light. They, they don't like fluctuation, especially in DKH. Um, so if you, you keep it at 9, 10, 8, whatever, they like it to be stable. As long as it doesn't fluctuate too much, if you're above 8, you're probably good. Um, so what I'm going to do is you can see the white spot at the base here. And I'm going to attempt to break these guys. So what you want to do is I'm going to go just above the bad tissue and I'm going to cut the, the coral off and I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to frag it is just above the bad tissue. We're going to glue it to a new frag plug and try to save these guys. So with STN and RTN you don't always know what the root cause is but you got to do your best to figure out what's going on because corals Sometimes they just die on you, I guess. I've had that happen. But there's a reason why they're doing what they're doing. And this acro, I just dropped them right in the glue. So I, we're off to a good start. <laughs> it just shows that everybody makes mistakes. You just kind of got to do the best you can. So I'm going to wipe off as much glue as I can. But I'm pretty sure this guy, his tissue's going to die wherever that glue touched. I thought about cutting them off above the glue now. But I'm trying not to stress them too much, so we're gonna go ahead and glue them onto this this frag plug and see how he does. These are all Acropora that are showing the tissue necrosis. They're all different types but all the acros in that aquarium were starting to show stress. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's because of the fluctuation in my DKH. For one reason or another, it dropped, and it's usually pretty stable, but I have added a lot of SPS to this aquarium, and I think they're just they're, they're growing, and they're just sucking, sucking it out of the water. So I've set up a... Um, I'm using soda ash and a drip system to keep it elevated. And so this guy, you can see the white starting down at the base as well. So I think I've got the uh, root problem figured out and I'm correcting that. Now if you do have a DKH issue, you don't want to shoot that right back up. You got to do that slow over time. And I'm dosing very slowly and testing every day to bring it up slowly over the next month and it is raising so when I'm cutting the acropora here I'm picking a spot and I'm going like I said above the dead tissue and then I'm trying to find a spot on the coral in between the polyps where I'm making my cut so I got two frags off of this one. And I am going to put the base coral, what I cut the frags off of, back in the tank. And since I know the issue, I, I think I can get them to come back. 
and I'll do an update video down the road on these guys and let you know how it turns out. So the only, the, between the slow tissue necrosis and the fast tissue, rapid tissue necrosis, um, I don't know a ton about it. I, I don't know that anybody really does. Something causes it and it happens. Um, a slow can take, you know, days to weeks, um, a month. You'll notice the tissue decaying on these things very slowly and then the rapid stuff like I said can happen all night you'll wake up the next day and you'll have um, blotchy white spots on your acros or your monopora I've even had some some zoanthids just kind of melt away but mainly in my experience it's affected on um, the SPS corals the acros and it's a good idea if you have a quarantine system um, to keep keep it away from other healthy corals because you don't know what's causing it pest um, you know in this case it's a water quality issue the DKH so um, they're going back in the same tank I don't want to stress them any more than what I have by switching the lighting and different water chemistry by throwing them into a different aquarium I'm gonna to try to keep all the other variables as constant as I can. So once again I'm gonna cut where there's good tissue. I'm gonna go in between the polyps. And these are tiny little guys. So the theory is here I guess if um, the RTN consumes the coral I've got some frags off of it and I've at least got a chance of growing the frag back and, and not losing that species of coral. If the water chemistry was the issue and the, the base coral recovers, awesome. I've got three corals now. I got two frags off of it. Um, worst case, you know, bad case scenario, the base dies and, and I got two frags. I just have to grow back. So you're kind of minimizing damage and, and cutting your losses. Whenever I frag corals, I do dip them. I'll use Coral RX when I'm getting new corals in. I use Coral RX to treat for um, pests. I'll dip them in that and quarantine them. And then whenever I frag, I like to use an iodine-based dip, like the Seachem Reef dip. It just kind of helps promote uh, recovery, and it cuts down on bacterial infections from cutting the coral. So I'll dip them in this for a little bit it helps to promote healing and um, promote a healthy slime coat on the corals it's just it's good habit I think good practice to get into anything I can do to you know increase my chances of taking care of these things because they can be temperamental especially the SPS stuff I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take that extra step to do whatever I can sit in the dip for a little bit and we'll get them back into the tank so here we go I've got the, the base colony and the frags back in the aquarium a couple hours after uh, shooting this I did have polyp extension coming back on the coral which is a good sign so We'll let them go, and I will do an update video, see if we got the problem fixed. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.